Hey, welcome to another live stream here at Willow Ridge Acres. Uh, it's been a while, so we wanted to jump on a live stream and uh, let you guys know uh, everything's all right. Um, for the most part. Yeah. yeah, we've just been dealing with some stuff, uh, some family stuff, and uh, but we're still you know, doing our, our farm thing and uh, the Great Pyrenees and, and our puppies. And uh, we just wanted to keep everybody posted on what's going on and connect with you guys again. So uh, if you got questions, drop them in the chat right now. We'll be answering your questions live and uh, just kind of keeping you up to speed on everything going on here on our little farm. Do you want to catch them up to speed since September? September. Yeah, yeah. we had to look up the date of the last live stream we did. Um, you know, of course, the holidays are busy for everyone. We have five kids. So and then like our birthday season, all of our kids we're born between August 27th and December 7th. And so we call that birthday season. And then we have Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas and our anniversary and all kinds of stuff. Um, so, yeah. 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 And we still, we're just uh, kind of recovering from having uh, 25 puppies all at the same time, three different litters. So that was quite a bit of work. So just taking, uh, you know, some time to, uh, I guess, recover from that and get ready for the next round coming up soon. Sing single. Round. Yes. We're not doing multiple <laughs> litters at the same time again. That was crazy. No. That was crazy. Yeah. So we've got some people jumping on, by the way, uh, if you're watching right now, uh, drop a comment in the live chat, let us know where you're watching from. We'd love to give you a shout out, see where everybody's watching from. So, uh, let's see, you've got Hadley saying, hey, hey, what's up, Hadley? Thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you have any questions. Forrest, uh, he got two of our puppies. Matt, he says, Maddie and Kat says, hi, from Alabama. Awesome. Hey, Forrest, I, I enjoy getting those updates from you and the videos and pictures and stuff. Uh, it looks like they're doing amazing on your farm and uh, just becoming uh, the great guardians that we knew they would be. So that's awesome. Uh, Hadley says... How are the puppies? So <clears throat> they're all great. You know, we get updates pretty regularly from all the recent litters we just had. And then even, you know, previous litters, we're still in touch with a lot of our families. And um, yeah, sometimes it's even just at kind of times when we're super busy with our family or things are heavy here or whatever the situation is. And then families reach out and send us, you know, a picture and it just kind of warms our hearts a little bit. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when we, when we, uh, find our forever homes for our families or, you know, for our puppies, uh, we like to see if, <laughs> if they have like an Instagram account yeah. and if they're active and we follow them. So it's pretty cool. Uh, several, several of them went to homes where they're very active on, you know, Instagram or on, on Facebook. So we get to, you know, follow along with, uh, kind of their daily lives in their new families. And it's, uh, pretty cool to do that. Yeah. yeah we like doing that. Hadley asked, uh, who will you breed for the, for the puppies? So, um, up next is Millie. Yeah. So Millie is actually currently in heat right now and we skipped, uh, at least one heat, two heat, two heat cycles. Yeah. Two heat cycles since her last, uh, breeding since her last litter. And um, so Millie is in, currently in heat right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a confirmed uh, like mating yet, uh, but we've been keeping an eye. And they're still just uh, doing this other ritual that involves a lot of growling and uh, yes. taunting. Yes. Mac is very interested, but Millie <laughs> is saying not right now. <laughs> he, has to, he has to earn it. He has to earn it. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she likes to play it hard to get. So um. but we're pretty confident in, yeah. in them. I mean, haven't failed us, but I mean, yes. you never know. Um, we'll we'll keep it at that. This is so a, this is plan, a family program. We're not going to go into. Yeah. <laughs> our current plan is to to breed Millie, and then May should be going into heat anytime, and so we'll confine her and skip another heat for May because we won't have, have to multiple. So then May will the be bred on her heat after yeah. this one, unless Millie and Mac don't breed and then we'll breed may but only one of them will breed this year yep yep and then if you if you're not keeping up on it uh mabel got spayed so mabel was our other uh uh you know breeding female and 
Uh, she had a total of three litters over a course of five years. And uh, it's not really the number of litters that we're concerned, you know, we were concerned about. Uh, it's just that uh, her second litter, she kind of had a little bit of complications. And then this last litter, uh, she really had some, like we had to have uh, like an emergency vet see her and you know, she's fine now, but we, we just don't want to push our luck. Uh, all of our dogs are our own family pets and we love them. And um, we're not running not a puppy mill them. here. And yeah, it's not worth risking their health just to have another another litter of puppies so we need to do a video mabel has been retired and she's still here on our farm mabel's life after yes being a mabel mother, she's uh taken to the retirement role really really well yes yes she's <laughs> she's living the life right now for sure for sure so yeah millie is up next as long as uh you know mac breeds her we'll see Awesome. Awesome. We got, we have somebody uh, watching from Southwest Michigan. I love it. I love it. How'd you find us? Let us know in the comments. Me and my sis said, uh, hello from Gaston, South Carolina. Love your channel. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, sorry. We haven't been putting out much content recently. Um, we've, we've kind of shared a little bit on a video before, uh, but like our youngest son, he has some, you know, pretty complex, uh, health issues and, uh, we've really, you know, been dealing with a lot more of that uh, over the past like six months. So um, it's kind of taken a lot of our time and honestly, just a lot of like our emotional energy. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have we have some uh, video ideas coming up and uh, we're hoping to uh, get back in the flow of things and get back to putting out some good content for you guys. Um, we have some products that we got recently that we really enjoy using for our dogs and we've been wanting to do like some product reviews and share that with you <laughs> we literally um, still have the stuff in the box we haven't even opened it because we want to like do like a whole like yeah opening of the box with everybody so it's just sitting in the box waiting yep yep so we've got some some good product review videos coming up soon uh products that you know are relevant to uh either the dogs or um you know like farm living or uh just kind of like uh homestead lifestyle type mm -hmm. of uh, products. So be on the lookout for that. Hopefully uh, this next week we'll have a new video soon. So, yep. Marcia said, watching from Atlanta, Georgia. That's awesome. Thank you for tuning in. Daryl said, uh, Tennessee and Millie's hair is growing back. Thank yes, it is. Mm -hmm. It is. All of them are. All of them are. Back to their full. Yeah. Yes. And Mabel is not just full coat, but she's, <laughs> let's just say, uh, I'll say it nicely. Because, you know, you're not supposed to talk about a woman's weight. She had a hysterectomy. It's not fair to judge her she is size. Full, she is, I'm not weight shaming, okay? It's, she's full, she has a full coat and a full body. Let's just say that. Is that fair to say? <laughs> she's, she's, she's a healthy weight now. She is. Mm -hmm. Very healthy. Yes. <laughs> she's we love where her. God wants her to be. That's right. That's right. Uh, but yeah, they're all, they all have their, their beautiful coat back and yeah, let's see. Nicole said, Hey, I miss you all. Nicole, she got two of our puppies mm -hmm. from the last letter too. Nicole, let us know in the comments. How are they doing? Uh, we miss seeing them and, uh, send it like shoot us a text message, uh, some pictures or video or something. Love to see him again. Let's see, David said, just tuned in. I'm in central Texas looking for a puppy for guardian dog. When would one be ready or reserved? Yeah, uh, David, that's a great, great question. So um, it's kind of the whole like supply and demand thing, right? So uh, right now, all of our puppies are placed for, um, in their you know new homes from our waiting list. And right now we've got honestly about like, I want to say about like 50 people on our waiting list. And, you know, each litter might have, uh, six to maybe 10 puppies. Um, and we, you know, like I already said, we don't run like a puppy mill here. So we skip heats between litters on our females. So we're not cranking them out every single heat cycle. Um, really our, our, our girls are at, at most are having, uh, a litter once per year, most, most likely like once every 18 months. So it's, um, we're looking really more for like quality, not quantity. Um, but yeah, we have about 50 people on our waiting list, but I'll tell you, um, we don't, we don't charge anything to be on our waiting list. So, uh, what we find is once puppies are available, 
I start calling through the waiting list in the order that people join the wait list and some people drop off. Um, so I would say if you, if you want to join the waiting list, don't be discouraged by how many people are already on and think, Oh, there's no way I'm getting a puppy. Um, sometimes we burn through yeah. quite a bit of the waiting list They're just to find ready. this. Here. Yeah. Sometimes uh, people just want to defer to next year. Uh, so they get put on our wait list for next year or, you know, just a, a bunch of different reasons. Sometimes they joined and uh, they just ghost us. Like we can't even get a, ho a hold of them or they say they already found a puppy somewhere else, you know, just a whole bunch of reasons. So if you're, if you're serious about it, don't let the long wait list deter you. Um, and you can join our wait list by going to our website, willowridgeacres.com. You'll see the button up at the top. Uh, we just ask you to fill out a form, give us your you know, contact info a little bit more. You know, there's some questions you'll answer. And then uh, we follow up with you and uh, let you know once we have you know, puppies available. Let's see. The, how, do you, how do you pronounce that? The real Terry? The real Terry? I think, is that right? Am I pronouncing that right? The real Terry? All right, it says, God bless you all. Uh, after and before I got my uh, Pyrenees Anatolian mix pup uh, a year and a half ago, I started watching YouTube peer videos. And there you all were. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you for watching. Yeah, I hope that you find it, um, you know, informational, educational, and... Is informational a word? People use that word. It and is. I don't think it's a word. It is now. It doesn't sound like a word. I hope you found it, like... <laughs> Helpful. How about that? Helpful and uh, entertaining as well. Yes. And let us know in the comments uh, if, you, if there's any like video ideas that you have or, or things that you'd like to see us make videos on for, you know, a great Pyrenees or even like small farm living. We're always open for, you know, new video ideas. Hadley said, you guys are the best. Love your video. Shout out from Texas. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we really appreciate the love and support and, uh, we see people commenting and saying like, you know, please keep it up, please keep making more videos. And it's been like six months since we've made our last like video that wasn't a live stream. We just had a, like a lot going on. So, uh, we appreciate you guys still s sticking with us and supporting us. And, uh, we want to get to the point where we're making, you know, a couple of videos a month for you guys and still doing live streams. Um, we really enjoy doing this. That's mm -hmm. why we do it um we love the dogs we love this breed we we love dogs in general i think we've shared this before but you know we have the six great pyrenees but we also have uh three other like inside dogs so we just we we have a, a huge heart for for dogs and for animals so mm -hmm. yep let's see nicole said uh they're doing great the puppies that they got uh daisy is still crazy of course <laughs> uh i'll send you some pics they're huge oh yeah yeah. Uh, I feel like for whatever reason, well, full disclosure, you know, we were learning as we went. So like Mabel's first litter of puppies didn't get bottle fed. And I don't know if that, I mean, you know, in nature that obviously doesn't happen, but we do that now. And I feel like this round of puppies, because we had to bottle feed all of Mabel's puppies, they are all huge. And then... Yeah. Because we were bottle feeding Mabel's, I think the other litters ended up getting more bottle feedings than we've done before. And so they're all literally like huge. Yeah. I don't understand. I, I think that's the reason. I don't know why, but for yeah, all three of these litters were just humongous, especially May's puppies. Like they Yeah, out, and May's like, one of May's are like smallest, smallest female, and she had the biggest pups. It was crazy. I don't I don't it, genetics dog know, genetics yeah. yeah but yeah they are getting big uh uh a story we want to share with you guys uh we actually got to have one of our puppies back uh this go around it hasn't happened very much at all in you know our experience but uh if you don't know in some of our you know uh puppy owners now are are watching so they know uh, we have uh all of our future families fill out like a contract and in our contract we state that if it doesn't work out for whatever reason, please bring the puppy back to us. We don't want our puppies ending up in a shelter or honestly, like a little selfishly, we want to be in control of where they get rehomed to. We want to make sure that our puppies end up in good homes mm -hmm. no matter what. So um, we had one of our, you know, uh, families, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, take us up on that and, uh, you know, without divulging too much info on somebody else's situation where you know basically it went to a 
a home where there were uh, like elderly people um, and it was, it, these are big dogs. And it's uh, at this point in that dog's life, it's a uh, 70 pound, mm -hmm. six month old puppy. It's still very much a puppy, uh, a lot of energy. And apparently the, you know, this 70 pound puppy was jumping up on, uh, you know, the, the 80 year olds and uh, was knocking them over. And the doctor was like, you've got to get rid of this dog. It's, it's not you know good for your health. So they um, called us and said that they needed to bring it back. And we took it back in open arms and uh, worked with her a little bit, you know, on, on jumping up on, on correcting that behavior. We had her for what, like a month. Yeah. A month. Mm -hmm. And uh, we already found her a new home and she's, Thriving. thriving oh yeah thriving. she's in a great home now and uh the, with a new family um uh, loving it so mm -hmm. but yeah we we got to have that you know seven or six or seven month old puppy back in our house and we actually had her in the house uh because she was very she much was a, an inside yeah she was an inside dog from the get-go and uh she wasn't she wouldn't have been fit to be a, a livestock guardian at that point no. um but she's Honestly, it broke my heart. Like it was hard. It was hard to rehome her. Um, if we didn't already have six of them, I would have kept her. Hundred percent. She was. She's. A, she's going to be. She already is an amazing dog. Well, she was one of Mabel's puppies. Yeah, can say that much. Um, and just she was so much like Mabel, and we truly love Mabel. Yeah, yeah. So, but well, we love all of them. But it's just like Mabel and Mac were our first ones and there's just something about mabel that is just so regal that it was She's like Queen a mabel. weird yeah. feeling to like have her in the house and then we would tell each other almost every day she looks even more like mabel today she looks even more like mabel today and then it was like you walk out and like mabel's like <laughs> sitting on the couch and i'm like we got to, we literally got to the point where we told each other because she kept asking you need to go down the wait list. We need to find. And we find. Need to be working on this. Yeah, I went down our wait list. You're getting connected. <laughs> and basically, was like, because when you join our wait list, you we ask, are you looking for a livestock guardian or a companion dog? What, what gender are you looking for? So I started looking, and I was trying to find somebody local too, because I wanted to make sure somebody could come and easily see her mm -hmm. in person and make sure it was going to be a good fit and all that. Um, so I started, but. She, she was like, are you going to look through the waiting list and find, you know, the, per you know, the right person? I was like, yeah, yeah. And I kept for saying, yeah, for like week. for over a week. And she kept, she was like, if you don't do it, we're going to fall in love with her well, and you're going to. Because the truth is I was in, we were falling in, in love the hospital with, her. with our son Yeah, for a long time. And yeah. we took this dog in and he would send me pictures of the dog on the couch <laughs> The dog in sleeping bed, in bed with me. <laughs> the dog cuddling with one of our kids, and I'm yeah. like, it's amazing to see that, and it was great to see that the temperament and all the qualities that we know of them were still there even once she left our care. You know, yes, um, and that was great to see. But I literally was like saying, do not get attached yes. to her. Yes. But we found a great family for her and that, you know, that certainly helped. She's literally living like her best life. Yes. It was a perfect match for her. Yes. It was all, it all worked out the way it was supposed to be. That's right. That's right. But it was cool. It was cool to have that experience. And then, yeah, so, so Nicole and, and uh, Forrest, I know the, you know, we, we know what size they are because we literally just had one of our pups back. So yeah. they're, they are huge right now. hundred percent. Yeah. All right, David said, uh, thanks, I'll sign up. Awesome, awesome, man. Yeah, I'll be following up with you. The real Terry said, we got we got the name right. Awesome. Good. It's good. <laughs> Forrest said, at nearly eight months, the girls are just as Ugh. big as the sheep. Sheep creep me out still. She, I hate when people, it's like me. We have goats. Sheep. Say she, I read that sheep comment, and it's like, <laughs> okay. Forrest, we have, you saw, you came to the farm. We have the goats, but we don't have any sheep, and we went. Uh, actually, when we were looking to get like some of our first Great Pyrenees, we visited a few farms where they were breeding Great Pyrenees. And uh, one of them, guy was super, super helpful, but um, th theirs weren't ready yet or something, no, right? They yeah, they were literally just born. Yeah, um, but he was he was super helpful, but uh, they had <laughs> they had sheep and we're talking to him, uh, to this this farmer guy. And 
Michelle freaks out because there was this sheep that literally walked up right next to her and started like hot breathing right on her right hand. Right on my hand. And it was like mouth. That like hot like breath. Right there. And it was like. <laughs> and I was like too scared to move because I'm like, <laughs> are they quick or not? Like, I don't know. But it was like. Yeah. The hot breath. You got to so, love the hot breath. Anyway, sidetrack. <laughs> Nicole said, oh my God, Pearl is so big. Pearl was, Pearl was, uh, was that Ma Mabel's. Mabel's? Yeah, that's right. Uh, was it? I'd have to look at our, our list again. I'm sure Nicole could tell us. Yeah. Maze. Pearl was May's. Well, that yeah. makes sense. May had some really big pups. I don't have any reason. Melissa, our daughter, chimed in she's from upstairs. upstairs. She's she's like our puppy guru. When we have puppies, what? like well, we she literally game. sleeps out there with them. Somebody sends us a picture. We show her the picture, and then we say, "Who is this?" Yes, yeah, and we'll see if quiz she her. Can tell and from, almost all the time, she, she can know. Right. Yeah. All right, Nicole said, "Oh no, yes, even mine want to jump still. I'm so glad y'all could take the pup back and yeah. help out." family to you yeah i mean we take in neighborhood dogs we take in a lot of animals because it just is who we are we've literally always been that way do you remember we lived in an apartment and um there was a cat meowing outside and our neighbor had thrown it like a chicken carcass or whatever yes it, yeah we won't talk about that cat but uh, <laughs> yeah we ended up with that cat yes <laughs> <laughs> uh the real terry said not to get into your finances but how much did your food so dog I food bill go up yeah we're actually I working on our taxes right taxes, now right? i'm working on taxes and so i was entering in dog food bills and then they're all dated and everything and you could see the dates so our dog food bill for the time that we had the puppies was three times the amount it normally is so we spend about with the current prices of food and everything, we spent about three eighty on dog food right now. And How we're, often? We're purchasing it every three to four weeks. It just depends a little bit. But when we had the puppies, we were spending that every, every week. single week. Yeah. So uh, the real Terry. So uh, we get our dog food from uh, our local tractor supply and we feed our dogs uh, Victor High Pro. We have that on our website and I think we talked mm -hmm. about it in one of our videos and stuff. Um, but uh, I do like a curbside pickup and we're actually do mm -hmm. like, I'll probably need to go tomorrow. Uh, and when, when I like, so about once every three to four weeks right now, I put in an order for six uh, 40 pound bags of dog food. That's how much dog food we go through right now. Now that's our, our inside dogs eat it as well, but they're, fairly small compared they don't Very eat small. yeah they eat a fraction of what the great pyrenees eat so we have our six great pyrenees and then we also have Three. a blue healer we have a blue healer golden retriever mix and then we have a uh, a little chowini like a little but chihuahua our blue healer doesn't dog. eat the victor oh, that's right. food because she is allergic <sighs> to everything I forgot about that she she eats like a vegan she's it's a vegan dog i'm embarrassed yes to say it it's like this expensive, like it's one hundred and fifteen dollars a bag. But thank heaven, she she's eat very that much. small in a bag. Lasts a very long time. But we were feeding her the Victor, and all of our dogs do great, great on that um, for almost a year. And then all of a sudden, she just kept like throwing up every single night, like literally right at bedtime. It was the most annoying thing. Like you're trying, you're literally just falling asleep, and all of a sudden you hear that. You know the sound. Oh, it's the worst. Oh. And she would throw up all of the food that she yeah. ate. Um, and so we, we had an, a, a workup. We thought she maybe ate a bunch of cat litter and had an obstruction because this went on for about two weeks. But like, if you go back even further, we're super busy. We have a lot of kids, a lot of dogs. We had actually gotten her this like allergy shot um, because she had a rash really yeah, bad like on about her three stomach months and after stuff. we got her. And I forgot about that. And then about six months after that shot is when she started vomiting. Well, th we thought she had. <laughs> and I need to put my computer on like do not disturb. I forgot to do an that. obstruction. But um, so we did a whole thing with that. She spent a couple of days at the vet, came home. We thought she was good. Then she started throwing up again. Yeah. So then the vet was like, and then I took her back and I said, you know what? We actually did that allergy shot. I wonder if that was it. So we gave her another one. I don't know what it's called. And 
um, they had given us a trial of this like expensive soy whatever dog food. It literally is white. It doesn't it's even like have a, any flavor. It's a Purina Pro Plan type, but it's like a like it's you can only get it from your vet. Yeah, it's prescription. It's like a prescription dog food. I, so of course we would end up with a. <laughs> so then I was like, well, we got her the allergy shot. Her tummy settled. She did good for like two months. Let's try to give her the dog food and see if the shot solves the problem. And within two days, she was puking again. So yeah, yeah. that's how Rosie got on. Rosie, come here. Food. Come here. Come here, Rosie. But yeah, uh, so so the real Terry to to in a nutshell, yeah. once every three weeks. This is Rosie, the this one with Rosie. the crazy dog or the crazy food allergies. <laughs> She's an awesome dog, though. She is a really good dog. But um, yeah, once every three weeks, we're buying six 40 pound bags of yeah. dog food on a normal basis. And then when we had three litters at the same time, not right away did it go up, but once yeah. the puppies once they were eating, once, they, once the puppies were eating the dog food too. It got to the point where I was putting that order in once yeah. per week. So for six weeks, we did that. For six weeks, I was buying six 40-pound bags of dog food a week. Um, the guy at Tractor Supply thought I was insane. Mm -hmm. Loading up my truck. And it was during the dog, dog food, food shortage of yeah. last summer. I yeah. don't know if people remember that, but we were just so thankful that they kept us in stock. Yeah. Nicole said it was maize and that uh, Melissa was on point and fast with it. She she knows all of her pups. Hey, uh, Ryan's tuning in uh, oh, with Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah, he said Jimmy is still the sweetest dog and so tall. Jimmy, Ryan, you got to send us a, a picture. Send us a picture or a video. I want to see Jimmy. I want to see what he looks like. Uh, I'm assuming he probably lost all of his uh, badger markings. Mm -hmm. That most of them do. Yeah, but love to see him. Hey, drop uh, more comments in the you know more questions in the uh, comments. We'd love to. You know, keep answering your questions here and uh i i would love to have the like multi camera thing going and i was yeah. actually thinking about doing that i was telling michelle i was going to but it's, it's i mean it got dark at six o'clock yeah. you wouldn't be able to see anything out there so um it should start light lightening up what's the name for that yeah definitely over the summer when it's like still sunny until you know nine o'clock we'll we'll be doing these live streams again and you know have the multi cameras going where you can actually see uh you know the great pyrenees i i hate that i say you know that this is a great pyrenees live stream and then we don't even have a great pyrenees on it well, thank I, you guys for like I tuning in people though. like us too <laughs> yeah i mean we're talking about them but um we still have them i i i promise you they're still out there inside. you can for a minute go get them just we Monty can't leave them inside because yeah. he'll pee on everything he, do, he doesn't care to be. He loves. Anyways. No, he doesn't. He, he doesn't. likes to like come through the door. Look here comes Monty. Here, I'll like, turn the camera. Hi, buddy. Here he comes. Look. Come here. Come here, boy. Oh, good boy. Oh, good boy. He just woke up from a nap. Hi. He just woke up from a nap. There's Monty. Big boy. <laughs> Say hi. Say hi, Monty. <laughs> He's tired. Oh, buddy. Oh, were you sleeping? On his little bed. He has a little crib mattress outside. Yes. That's Monty and then Gloria. Gloria. Gloria's yeah. like Good boy. constantly jealous of everything. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> All right. Awesome, so awesome. See? On it's a great Pyrenees live stream. Yeah. That was Monty coming to you live. <laughs> From his nap. Yes. All right. Uh, Forrest said, Mabel's pup is the larger of the two and May's pup lost the badger marking and her eyeliner is so black <laughs> i should have named her alice cooper i love it <laughs> hey that is definitely is may. Yeah. that's may yeah may has a so dark eyeliner across the property which one is her yeah. yeah i bet i bet uh may's pup for you for us i bet you can still kind like just the slightest little tan of like where her badger markings were that's how may may is yeah she just looks like a little dirty on her ears yeah yeah I want to know their personalities. Is May's puppy meaner? Not meaner. More like is her... May's or yeah. Mabel's? Well, Mabel's bark is really mean. Yeah. Mabel's not actually... like, And neither is May. Once anything is in are... the yard, May's fine. But if May sees even... Oh, that is true. Something on this side, she is not nice yes 
And Catherine was always more assertive. Yeah, I just want to know if that personality kind of yeah. stayed or yeah. not. But I remember when he was picking, he said, or we held up Catherine and we're like, she's a little cray cray. And he was like, I want that one. Yes, yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Alice Cooper. <laughs> uh, Ryan said, uh, we will send some photos Aww. of Jimmy. He, and he's, he has a little marking still. That's awesome. I can't wait to see him. Yeah. <clears throat> the real Terry said, I, I forget how large my pup is until I take him yes. to the kennel occasionally and they post pics on Facebook <laughs> of his day. <laughs> yes. For real. Yeah. Yeah. When we leave the yard with the animals, we or the dogs, we realize how big they are. Yeah. You just get so used to them, like in their, you know, I don't want to say habitat, but yeah. you know what I mean? Like, or when people come over in our yard, yeah, even honestly, when and people like, come oh over, oh my gosh, your dog is huge. I'm like, to us, like, we're so used to yeah. it. But then, like she said, one time she attempted to take Mac for a walk, our, our male, like, we have Monty and we have Mac. Monty is like, I wouldn't say like thicker, yeah. and he's got like a little bit bigger of a well, blocky he's head. Too. He's also a little bit older than Mac. Mac's gonna, he's still pretty young. He'll, he'll thicken out as he, as he ages. But Mac is taller, so he's got he's got the frame to be bigger than Monty. Uh, but I bet they weigh about the same right now. Mm -hmm. um, but Mac has the frame to be bigger and weigh even more, um, and he'll fill that frame out. But she tried to take Mac for a walk one time and tell him <laughs> tell him what happened. Well, I have like PTSD from like walking a dog. We had Akitas when I was a kid and a thunderstorm rolled in and my mom like made this homey homemade leash. And I'm like, why would you do that? And it <laughs> it was the longest <laughs> leash ever. And this storm rolled in and we lived on a golf course and this dog took off and I had the leash because I was trying to walk with it like fully wrapped around my whole arm because it's a bad I was idea. young. And the dog took off and like drug me all through the golf course. I was covered in mud and I was like terrified. And I get home and my parents were peeing their pants laughing. My family, <laughs> my daughter's laughing right now. My family like laughs at this story every time. It was so scary. So anyway, I am like, we're going to take Mac for a walk. We want him to learn how to be on a leash. And like, if we're going to go on a walk, we should take Mac. If anything came at us, like we would be fine. I made it five feet, however far across the road is. Yeah. Five feet from the house. And I stood there and realized how large he was. And he was pulling me a little bit to smell our a donkey that was over there. And I made the kids run the neighbor's and donkey. get Jeff because it occurred to me that if I have no control over this dog at all. He is so big. Like yeah. I'm, this is a really bad idea. <laughs> so then I just got so she had, scared. She had like flashbacks of when she was a child. I wouldn't even drugged. walk him like back across the street because I'm like, our other neighbors like up the <laughs> hill, like they all have dogs and stuff. And I was like, if this dog decides any second, he's going to take off. Like I'm, I'm done. And so he came out and got him and he was like, you're ridiculous. <laughs> That's yeah. the one time I took Mac on a walk. They are huge. Like every once in a while we have to, you know, take what our, our vet actually comes out, yeah. you know, to our house usually, but there's been a couple of times, like we, you we had a video. Mac yeah. Mac time. like cut his eye on something. It was like big old wound above his eye and he's, he's fully recovered from it. But uh, that day I had to take him to the vet and like, he doesn't fit in my truck. So I have to, I put like a, a big old kennel in the bed of the truck and I strapped the kennel down and I lift, <laughs> lift his big butt in, into the, into the bed of the truck, put him in the kennel. And it's when you get to the vet and you've got this big old dog that you realize how big it is. Cause it's hilarious. Like uh, Melissa's sitting, you know, in front of the thing here. Uh, but she always goes to the vet with me when we go and you know, I'll be standing in there with Mac and it's so funny when like somebody else comes in with their little whatever tiny dog and they come in the door and they're always like, oh gosh, like they're afraid that Mac's going to like eat him or something. I'm like, he's fine. He's yeah, <laughs> you can come in though. You can come in the room. He's not going to eat you. <laughs> but yeah, Mac is huge. He's he's 32 inches tall at his shoulders. I, 
you know, that's where, you know, for breed standard, that's where they measure him. I didn't measure him like the top of his head. Uh, so he's 32 inches, like on his back, like where you would pet him on his back. Pretty tall. Um, but anyway, yeah, <laughs> they are huge. Uh, Forrest said that they had a discussion the other night and May's pup, Catherine, is definitely in charge. <laughs> So the pups had a discussion about who was in charge, huh? Oh, <laughs> and Catherine was like, it's definitely me. It's me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With that dark eyeliner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like her full personality. Yes. Was like coming out. That's awesome. Yes. That's awesome. The real Terry said, and then there was the evening he stood up on his back feet to look over the window or out the window at a deer. And I realized he's just about as tall as yeah. me. That's how I Mac have is. one picture from the winter storm. Or yeah. Whatever. Yeah, one of our uh, videos on YouTube, um, it's uh, the like, how cold is it too cold or how cold is too cold for Great Pyrenees? That video gets a ton of views. And uh, like on YouTube, one of their metrics that they track is like click click through rate. And it's basically like how many like what's the percentage of how many times people see the thumbnail versus how many times people actually click on it to watch the video because um, you want to have a good, you know, engaging click you know, uh, engaging uh, thumbnails so that people click on it. Uh, well, that's one of our best thumbnails. Like people click on it a lot. And it's because the thumbnails of her with Mac standing up on his hind legs and Mac is like taller than her, mm -hmm. like looking straight in her face. And people are probably in, you know, Mac's big old coat and he looks yeah. huge. And they're probably like, oh my gosh, what the website how big is that dog? That too. Yeah, in yeah. Our, like, gallery. When I stand up and, you know, hold Mac's, you know, front legs. I mean, he's looking straight at me. Uh, we had one of our friends uh, come over today and he, how tall is, he said he was six, six foot five. five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, he's six foot five. And he's like, I rarely see a dog that I can just like pet yeah. without having to bend down and pet him. And he's just like petting back to staying straight up. He's like, this is a huge dog. It's crazy. Uh, Nicole said, May's puppy is bigger and firmer. Mabel's is the first to bark and a little spastic. Pearl is so chill and laid back. Daisy is exactly the same as when I got her, except like 70 pounds. Yes. <laughs> spastic is Mac for sure. Yeah. She has a more she probably got like, that from... anxious personality. Yeah. Mabel's she probably got that from Mabel. Sounds like a, something trying to kill you. Mabel has that like aggressive bark, like a like a Rottweiler or something. Yeah. Like she's her bark is like so much more aggressive sounding than all of her other yeah. Great Pyrenees. Yeah. Yeah. Max bark is kind of. <laughs> Does it goofy. match? Do, do, yeah. Do your impression, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> like that's his bark. <laughs> it's like he tries so hard to like bark loud, but it's like not super loud. But he's still, I mean, he, he'll still scare things away. Yeah. <laughs> The real Terry said, uh, another name is hard to pronounce. How do you pronounce that? Is that Eros? That's what I'm saying. E Eros. Eros is at 32 inches as well at the shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> I'm terrible with pronouncing like different names. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Well, I never. <laughs> yes, that that is one of the reasons why, like, I would never consider being a teacher because uh, I would hate like yeah. calling attendance and like butchering everybody's names. But if you smile while you're doing it, nobody cares. <laughs> then you just say, "Hey, I'm going to give this a try." <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Let's see. Nicole said, "Oh my God, Daisy is weird. Her bark in the house is like a squeaky toy. Outside is more manly, but inside she is squeaky. Mm. Huh. That's interesting. I wonder why she barks differently inside versus outside. Mm. Yeah. Maybe it echoes. Maybe it echoes. <laughs> she said, Pearl is deep all the time. She sounds like she eats kittens, yeah. but she is so sweet. <laughs> That's that was funny. one thing about the dog that we had, a puppy that we had here. Yeah. We have a cat inside and um, she did really great. It's almost like the, you know, when they're familiar, we weren't sure. And she, she did great. And she lives with a cat now and she's doing yeah. great. Yep. 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 
All right, drop some more questions in the comments if you got any questions for us about, you know, the Great Pyrenees, about small farm living, um, even just about life. I don't know. I may not give you the best answer, but. <laughs> you never know. You never know. It may be the best answer. It may, it may be. It might be. He's yes. very, uh, what's the word? I mean, he preaches, so there's that. Oh, that's true. That's true. There was a word I was looking for, but I can't. Yeah, it. it's escaping you right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've been dealing with a lot here, though, and even just, like, uh, fixing a lot of stuff. Like, my truck keeps, stuff keeps breaking in my truck. and my I'm, car. Yeah, I'm literally waiting on a part right now for my truck. It's supposed to be delivered today, but uh, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So, hopefully tomorrow. Yeah. I feel like you just go through, like, stages of like when you have a home and kids and stuff where like a lot of it like comes in like groups yeah like we had to replace our washer and our dryer which was just sad we've had it since we we've had that for oh that's not sad 17 <laughs> years that's not that sad it was sad <clears throat> yeah but we believe this spring will be better for us we just want to get through life right now and yes. i mean we're going in 10 different directions i know a lot of people are and you oh know, yeah groceries are more expensive and kids and all the things our son got his driver's license yesterday yes that was crazy yes our our son uh he's 16 now he just turned 16 back in um december yeah, and he just uh, took his driver's test and passed it yesterday. Yes. So he got his, he got his uh, driver's license. So we've got our first, you know, child driver now. He's not ready to be driving on his own no. just yet. We're we're working with him. No, I, um, yeah, <laughs> on the way to the driver's license place, ended up telling him at one point that we had it was me and our youngest, and then Cameron. I was like, I don't want to die in the car. You're right now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Nothing in life prepares you for um, your kids. Like, I feel like we're just at this stage of parenting where we don't know what how to handle all of the things that we feel or even the right things to say or do. Or It's just so weird. We yeah. Just, I just told him the other day, we had five kids really back to back to back. We were just like parenting, you know. People were like, oh, I don't know how you do it. Like, that seemed so much easier, really. Because it's <laughs> Having just like, babies? Okay. Well, since you said it that way. <laughs> it's just like a task, you know? Yeah. But like parenting is different now. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, oh, we already, we already said that one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, look. He told you how to say yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, the real Terry said it's pronounced Eros. Like I like that. A like that. R R O W. -S. Yeah, Air Eros uh, has a deep, loud bark from Hades. <laughs> That's what Mabel sounds like mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, if you if you listen to uh, like a recording and you didn't see like you know video or a picture of Mabel barking and then of Mac barking and we tried to you know if you had to guess which one was like the male, you'd probably think it was Mabel's mm -hmm. like she sounds more like aggressive mm -hmm. and yeah I mean you don't mess with Queen mm -hmm. Mabel Nicole said oh my god somebody someone called the cops on us because of the pups barking when we let them out yesterday morning any advice for that keeping them quiet during quiet times mm. hmm when we lived in New Braunfels, our neighbor's dog <clears throat> barked incessantly anytime they left the dog um and it was we, like a this like whining anxious like separation anxiety bark though well, like it would, wasn't like the dog wasn't even barking at anything in particular it was just like incessant is incessantly separation anxiety barking yeah. yeah and they weren't home and, and they so weren't they, home instead of like kenneling or something they would just put it outside and then they didn't have to listen to it and they'd be gone all saturday night and leave it barking outside at all hours of the night. As long as you're not doing that, um, dogs bark. Yeah. So. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, I guess like legally, is there anything? So there's usually like noise violation hours. Um, they could come out and measure the dog's bark. And if it's over a certain um, decibel. decibel, you could get a ticket for that. But um, I'm not sure what city you live in. So I don't know if there's a noise ordinance. If there's not, then um, I'd say they could get glad in the same pants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we try, we don't. Our dogs bark for a reason. So I would tell them, you know, your dogs are barking for a reason. They don't bark just for the fun of it. And of course, if you're home and can bring them inside, then bring them inside. Yeah. It's good. But our dogs bark and our neighbors, they're kind of across the street and up a little bit. They've told you they hear them barking, but they love our dog. Like, it, they're protecting like this whole area. So deterrence. Um, Boris said the pups are coming into their bark, but I don't think they are territorial yet. When coyotes are howling, they aren't so concerned about them. Uh, when do you think they'll start mm -hmm. to become guardians? I mean, they're still really young. Um, yeah. I would say for sure by 18 months, you should see them kind of doing their own thing. There wasn't a scorpion over there, was there? No. She kind of shook her head. Yeah, that was weird. Um, um, yeah, I would say it, it, it could be that they're still just a little young. Uh, like she said, around 18 months is when they're like, you know, fully like matured into that. Um, but it, it could also be, you know, uh, you know, it's been my experience that they're really good. Like uh, they have really good judgment of like threat perception. Mm -hmm. So they might just not be that threatened by hearing them howling in the distance. Um, I, would, I would be more concerned if they saw a coyote and didn't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Because um, there's sometimes we can hear dogs barking in the distance and our dogs don't care. Uh, literally, our next door neighbor has like a, a, a doodle. And sometimes it sometimes it will be like running up it you know, up and down the fence line and stuff of our property. And sometimes our dogs react to it. And then sometimes they're like, whatever, the dog's not getting in the fence. Mm -hmm. Like it's not a threat. There's a new, so they don't, they don't um, care. <laughs> group Pyrenees, or it looks like it's a mix um, at the house that has the like black dog. So that's, um, yeah. And it just stands out because there's a, a big white dog there, but it's like a skinnier face. Yeah. I saw that. It barks all night long and our dogs don't bark at it. I was just outside the other night and I could hear it just go into town over there and they're all our dogs are just sleeping. So. Yeah. Let's see the real Terry said question. Our vet recommended not breeding dogs this size until you've had the hips x-rayed. Is that a rule for most or most folks follow? So I would recommend that you do some research on um, <laughs> our two dogs are, play finding right now um hip dysplasia rating systems um there's a lot of mixed opinions about that uh i would just recommend you do some research on that our vet doesn't give that advice yeah all right uh nicole said uh absolutely not we put them outside when we get up and they they usually are out for about an hour while I run kids to school and they bark at everyone yeah. walking down to school. Yeah. They're just being, being dogs. Yeah. I would, I mean, I'm sure every dog that's outside at that time does the same thing. So yeah. <clears throat> she said, uh, my problem is that they didn't even come to me. They just called yeah. our dogs aren't outside at night at all. Once it's bedtime. I mean, yeah. Everybody handles like confrontation differently. Some people are just like, they just want to let the police handle it or, you know, and it just, I wouldn't make a huge deal out of it. I, you're not doing anything wrong. And I presume, the, you know, cops told you that, um, I just let it, let it go and not worry about it. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you know which, which neighbor called and if you can be, you know, do it being the bigger person and just have a conversation with them and say like, Hey, I understand, you know, you, Concern about my dog's barking. Here's what we're trying to do to, you know, to. Yeah. Yeah. 
make them not bark as much, but please be patient with us. I right? mean, it's not the same thing, but our neighbors, they shoot off fireworks um, for holidays and our dogs are very fearful of that as some, you know, most dogs are. And we just had a conversation with them. Um, yeah, and just said, hey, can you just shoot us a text message when you know you're going to be doing them just so that we can make sure things are safe on our side? Yeah. I mean, do I like listening to it? No. Is it that big of a deal? No. Do they are they respectful of us and like our dogs now that they're aware that like Mac is deathly afraid <laughs> of fireworks? They are. Yeah. And so we work yeah. with them on it. Yeah. Yeah. We just asked like, hey, if it's not like New Year's Eve or uh fourth of yeah, july I celebrate texas independence day which i didn't realize was a thing <laughs> yeah and so we just want to know like if they're yeah. going to pop them so that we can yeah. go out there and make sure that mac isn't going to try to like beast his way through the fence and right. end up on the highway like he did one time yeah. so we have a whole video about that <laughs> otherwise known as one of the worst nights of our life yes <laughs> the real terry said arrows barks for a reason squirrels yeah. deer neighbors wind right. snow god yeah exactly. <laughs> butterflies yeah oh my gosh mabel and butterflies mabel hates butterflies, yes, mabel hates butterflies. <laughs> she'll bark at those too yeah <laughs> but you know like we were talking about though to me what annoys me oh and gosh a moth flew in now i'm like ah we closed that window yeah we closed Thank we you. had the windows open to like let some fresh air in and now we're starting to get some moths inside we don't have screens on our windows we need mm -hmm. screens <laughs> anyway, um, I, I I personally get annoyed like at dogs that like just incessantly bark at nothing, right? Like they're just like anxiously barking, but like our dogs don't do that. They bark when they perceive a threat. So like right now, they're I guarantee you they're out just like spread like spread out across you know our property, laying down underneath the stars and not barking at anything. You remember a few weeks ago they don't I just like you, they don't just bark all the time you know i was in jackson's room and the dogs were barking i could hear them on that side and they would not stop and i'm like what is, but monty wasn't barking so i was like what is going on so i went outside and monty monty's like older he's a deep sleeper he's sleeping in the like um flower beds <laughs> yes in and our flower beds. a deer runs across like right by where I was. The other dogs on the other side, they couldn't get over here, had seen the deer and, and they were, were just freaking losing out. their mind. And Monty's just like snoring away over here. <laughs> so then the deer ran off because I went outside. But I'm like, Monty, <laughs> <laughs> get up. <laughs> He's not like a working dog. He's enjoying his still retirement. I mean, he'll he'll get up and bark at stuff. Yeah, yeah, he will. But we don't expect that of him. Ooh, is yeah. that your car part? No, it's uh, not. Sorry, we saw somebody drive around in front of our house and thought maybe it was the part I need to fix my truck, but it's not. The wheel bearing went out on my truck. I've got like almost two hundred fifty thousand miles on the truck, so stuff happens, you know. Um, but I like to fix it myself because then we save some money, and I don't trust other people working on my stuff because too many people don't know what they're doing anymore. So anyway, that's I don't a, even know what a wheel bearing is. So <laughs> that's that. a, a rant for a different day. I don't like taking my cars to mechanics. No, he doesn't. He fixes everything. Unless it's somebody I know. I don't like taking it to a mechanic. I don't know because there's just too many that don't know what they're doing anymore. So there's fix not it myself. A lot he can't fix. I like to MacGyver stuff. Sometimes I break it worse. <laughs> so when he says like, oh, it's gonna be five hundred dollars, I'm like, you mean a thousand? Yeah. Well, recently <laughs> <laughs> the uh, evaporator core went out in my, on my truck. So my AC went out and in, down here in South Texas, that's bad. Um, so in order to replace the evaporator core, I should have done a video on this, but honestly, <laughs> it probably wouldn't have made our no. family friendly channel. No. <laughs> but um, in order to replace the evaporator core, you have to remove the entire dashboard. And that's quite an undertaking. Um, and in order to remove the, da the dashboard, you have to remove the center console, which means you have to remove one of the seats, which means you, like there, but halfway through when I had everything apart, like my whole truck looked like it had been gutted. Um, but in the process of removing the dash, 
of course, a couple other parts broke while I was carefully trying to re you know remove the dashboard. So it ended up costing like an extra like $150 to fix it. So not a big deal. You know, I still saved money. That that would have that would have cost like thousands of dollars if we took it somewhere to fix it's it. That's true. It was more the dramatic of like <laughs> He he's outside for hours and hours. Oh, I'm just gonna work on this. And oh, this you came in and you said this is gonna take a lot longer than I thought it was because you said you said I watched a YouTube video and I didn't watch the whole thing. You didn't watch the whole thing. Well, I don't need to watch the whole thing. I get the gist of it. So, <laughs> and then he comes in and he grabs his laptop yep. and he sits down at the table over there and She's it's just like, the what way did you that break? he like opens it and he goes. She's like, what did you break? What part are and you And I'll just for? like look around and be like, how much is this going to cost? <laughs> anyway. Well, I got that fixed. And now the wheel bearing is, yeah. it was so bad when I lifted the truck, the whole like driver's side front wheel was like, had like that much play in it. So that would be bad to keep driving on it like yeah. that. So one of my tires got like a little air, a bulge. like a bulge. My AC went out. Yep. It's just been one thing after another. Both of our cars are a little bit older, so. Yeah. All right, Forrest said, I don't think my two bark excessively at all. Definitely less than the three laps down mm -hmm. the road. Yeah. yeah. Dogs bark. That's what that's what they do sometimes. Daisy barks at what seems to be nothing, but it's mm -hmm. usually something yes. you just don't see. I've seen rats run across the fence and realize she knew it was uh -huh. there, and that's what she was barking at. Yeah. Well, hopefully she's keeping those away from the mm -hmm. house. <laughs> we need a little uh, blue healer or something to. Yeah, something we had a like miniature for rodents. Picture, and yeah. he was like the. Sorry, we loved him, but the most worthless dog until <laughs> we had a rental house that had a um, back porch that was like a deck, but the porch was on the ground. Yeah, it just barely set off up off the ground. So like so mice, there was like mice and stuff. A ton of mice and he would just sit there and like stare at the little hole and just wait. <laughs> And then he would murder them and leave them on the like a cat does. Like yeah. he would murder them and like he would leave just them for stare us. in that little crack, or like, like his little you. trophy. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole said, "I'm pretty sure she just likes to go outside to bark. She scratches at the door to go yeah. outside at night to bark. It's a constant back and forth." Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see. Ooh, Forrest asks, advice on leash training. I'm Number about to start. One, don't use a homemade 25 foot plus long leash. Let's, let's bring Melissa in. Yeah. Come, come around over here. here. So we're going to bring our resident dog, walker. dog, walking, dog walking expert into this. This is our daughter, Melissa. Say hi, Melissa. Hi. <laughs> How old are you? 14. She's 14. And she, uh, she has trained... Her Great Pyrenees, like hers is uh, Meredith. It's one of the, only, it's the only puppy we've kept. It was one of uh, Mabel, Mac and Mabel's first pups. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's got Meredith. And uh, give your advice on leash training. Um, I would say start off in like a quiet place where there's less distractions. Probably don't take them out on the road like right away. Um, and instead of like just walking along whenever they pull you, whenever they start to pull you, just stop and then just gently tell them to come back to you and then every single time they pull just start doing that and then eventually meredith did catch on that like if she pulls then we're not going to go anywhere so that's, that's good and we just use a regular leash, leash. not a yeah. retractable or anything yeah. like that and they just use well she has a harness but once they're going they were able to use a collar mm -hmm. but we use a harness just because pulling from the neck doesn't seem as effective as from you know the yeah. shoulder area from the shoulders that's good so basically if uh if the pup starts to pull you just stop walking mm -hmm. yeah. and wait until they're all right do you look at them and say are you done <laughs> <laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> yeah yes yeah, so that's that's great advice <laughs> parenting 101 yes. and dog walking at the same time <laughs> let's see Nicole said, oh, my God, so wait, you actually put your truck back together? It would have been trash if I had tried that. <laughs> oh, you should see the pictures of the of what it looked like when I had it all taken apart. It, Yeah, there's a lot. You came out and looked, and you are like. So I just have this. We used to, before we had kids, we would work on his Mustangs and, and stuff together. 
and I would just sit out there and enjoy his company. And now I walk out and I gauge the situation. And sometimes I get a chair out and I sit there and I enjoy our time together. And other times I U-turn and go directly back I always wonder why inside. you don't spend time, like, and spend time out there. Does it give you anxiety yeah, when you see, like, my truck that torn apart? Because it's like, if you were doing a recipe for me, I guess, like, if I was, like, making a recipe and then I didn't read the ingredient list first, I didn't even have, like, the pans I needed and my stove was broken. That's what it feels like to me is I'm just, like, how do see, you even manage? Can you see that? Oh, it's kind of, like, reflecting. That's what the inside of my truck looked like. There you go. With the dashboard all pulled apart and yeah and i got it all back together the ac works there's not any like rattles or creaking or anything it's all it's, it's all good Andrew's baby. Just, like stressed and like normally he's like pretty easy going for the most part i was stressed during that time <laughs> yes <laughs> well yeah i'll i'll admit that and was i don't know how to handle that because i'm like do you make a joke that was a bit more of an undertaking than some of the stuff um, I, I will admit there was a, a point that I got to where I was like, I hope I can get all this back together. I'm glad you <laughs> Now we, I mean, me and my son rebuilt like an engine, uh, for one of our friends in our driveway here that had a blown head, head gasket and we got that back together for her. That was fun. Yep. I just, I was that, that, uh, that kid as a child that um i like every toy i got i took it apart and tried to put it back together and that's how i learned so i probably annoyed the crap out of my mom by doing that and i, I play with legos a lot built stuff oh yeah that's that's jackson <laughs> all right joanne said hi from ohio hey thanks for watching she said i have a five-year-old great pyrenees my girl barks a lot at something everything lol yeah, yeah definitely. definitely it's just Thanks crazy to me how they'll just be like sleeping in the yard and it's like they can hear like a hawk or something up like the wind on their wings or yeah. whatever you would call that and they shoot up and are like i'm awake and i'm just like how did you even hear that yeah they're they're uh you know non-stop guardians yeah <laughs> Melissa, our daughter, uh, just this past week, we actually, it's kind of funny. We need to do a video sometime or include it in the video. So I spent some time as a, uh, as a youth pastor at our church and I don't remember why we had it. Oh, like 10 years. That wasn't like sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Like 10 years as a youth pastor at our church. And, um, but we did an event night one time there called a uh, animal print party. And we like told all the students to like wear animal print or whatever. And then for this for this event night, I bought like a tiger like mascot costume. I didn't wear it. I had like a student wear it for like animal print party, whatever. But it's got like the huge like giant like mascot head. Well, I, I came home the other day, and this was while Michelle was in the hospital with our youngest son. And uh, I come home, and Melissa's over there in the dog area with the tiger costume, and the dogs are all barking their heads off like. <laughs> like thinking there's like a, a legit there. tiger on the loose and like yeah nobody knows what to do yeah it was fun <laughs> all right the real terry said i use two leashes one clip to his collar and one clip to his harness i use a seven foot and a 15 foot have you ever tried something like that melissa well she's not walking back either and that's true is that's huge, true so. yeah yeah he said, yes, are you done is often asked. <laughs> are you done? <laughs> I actually asked that too. So, you know, we have Rosie, our blue healer, and then uh, Ranger, her brother. Uh, oh, I thought you were pointing to me. No, not her brother. <laughs> Ranger is Rosie's brother. Um, the breeder, the blue healer breeder that we got Rosie from, we also got a male from for her oh parents. God, yeah. And uh, we watch Ranger every once in a while. <laughs> Ranger has the worst uh, car anxiety. Yes. Um, for sake of, it's um, the 
it's a family program. But uh, what recently when I was putting him in, in, in the car, uh, he was like so scared. Like I picked him up and I went to like pick him up. He literally did the thing he did on the floor in, in Clowney in the in he, he like sharded all over the car. I had to like take it to the car wash and clean it. It smelled so bad. It smelled so bar so bad. He like his like anal glands like exploded all over the car. He was so like anxious. But uh <laughs> I put him down and we hadn't even moved anywhere yet. I was just loading him in the car. I just picked him up to put him in the car, and he was that anxious. I don't know why he's so anxious about being in a car, but I set him down on the car on the seat. And I was like, Are you done? <laughs> like, seriously, dude. There was a reason he did it inside though. The his <laughs> collar got stuck on oh, yes. the metal, like we have floor ACs, and it got he leaned down and it he laid down on got, the AC. He vent. got up and the his vent like grate was stuck to his it was stuck to his collar and he starts running around the house and like i i got thought it off something of was his, like chasing him or something yeah i got it off of his neck and i had the kids take him outside and then i walked back inside and when i was like what is that smell and he had like sharded in a whole circle all around our kitchen all on the fridge all on the floor it was like a trail everywhere but legit like he thought the great was attacking him so that's pretty high anxiety that well he was, did that in the car uh, it was bad yeah he's a character he's <laughs> just proved like each dog is different they yes. are their own personality rosie loves riding in the car yeah if i'm out if, if she's outside when i go to like leave for work she'll like she like perks up if she hears me like get my keys you know like she's she wants to go for a ride ranger not so much yeah no <laughs> Yeah, it, I just said the other day that he's proof that, like, I mean, my parents love him, but it's two retired adults Yes. raising him where we raise Rosie, and, like, dogs are a product of genetics and how you raise them. Yes. <laughs> and he's living proof of that. Yeah. We totally. love him, but he's special. Yes. Very special. That's a good word. That's I didn't a good know word about for it. The car thing. I'm I spared you that yeah, story. I, was, I think you were in the hospital yeah, with I Jackson. I was like, shouldn't you hear that right now? Sometimes I come home and just find all kinds of stuff, and I'm just like, oh my goodness, why yeah. didn't you tell me? This? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hadley said, uh, I would love to see a video on what it's like to own a small farm mm. slash ranch like a day in the life. Oh, that's, that's a good a, idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. We've also gotten uh, requests in the past uh, to do like. Uh, little house tour and we might do that sometime mm -hmm. not today because the house isn't like uh, super yeah. clean we have five kids it happens you know but yeah we have like kind of a little farmhouse style house here so maybe yeah. do like a little house tour someday we renovated it yeah we could share a little yeah. bit of the story of that we don't only work in on that our video. cars we do work <clears> on the house too yeah the house we're in um it's not that old. It looks like an older style, but it was actually built like in 1997. Um, but it was, it was the definition of uh, good bones and like a fixer upper. Um, but it needed some serious work. Uh, the, apparently the story of people living here previously, um, it was like hoarders that were living here and you could tell that they had dogs like we do. Uh, but must've been a lot of male dogs that, um, weren't fixed and were, uh, marking everywhere. There was literally like, uh, pee stains on the drywall everywhere and it smelled horrendous. When we would um, come, we'd, we'd make the kids put their hands Everything their was so dirty. Everything was so, so stained. Like it was literally the dirtiest house I've ever been in. And, uh, but we, we saw a, a ton of potential in it and the price was right on it. And we were able to, uh you know, get the house. And I mean, we put quite a bit, like, I think we put about like a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars worth of, of renovations into it. Um, but you know, we were sitting on quite a bit of, uh, equity now. So sweat equity. It's a, yeah, sweat equity. literally all summer long. Yeah. It took us, it took us a whole <laughs> year, um, from the time that, you know, we bought the house to the time we were able to move in. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we didn't, we didn't live in the house while we were working on it. That's how bad it was. It was a complete gut job for, for basically a whole year. There was no electric, no, no plumbing. So when we would drive out here, cause we lived at the time, uh, 
you know, if you're familiar with the area, we lived over in like a rental house in New Braunfels. Uh, it's about like 45 minutes away from here. And uh, I would drive over here on my free time and, and work on stuff uh, to get it done. And that's how we saved money on it. And, you know, we hired, uh, you know, some contractors, but like kind of as side jobs. And then some of the stuff was done by some friends of ours. So, you know, we got some like good friend discounts. Like, let me see if I can tilt it up. Uh, like, there you go. Like, see our, our railing on the steps? Uh, that was done by a friend of ours um, that, uh, I'm going to sneak peek of the house tour. <laughs> anyway, um, that railing wasn't there. It was like wood railing before and it was all falling apart short, and terrible. Yeah, it was dangerous. like super short upstairs. But we have a friend that welds, so he did custom railing for us and just stuff like that. But, but yeah, it was it wasn't in livable condition to like, we gutted every bathroom. We only saved one oh, toilet good. that seemed like it was fairly new, but we still ended up replacing it. But we saved that one while in construction. And when we would come out here, we we would bring like uh, uh, like big old gallons of water. Gallons, of water. Excuse me, like gallons and buckets of water uh, so that we could flush the toilet. Mm -hmm. You know, we would like fill it, fill the top tank so that we could if we needed to use the bathroom, we still could, uh, you know, because the water was cut off. So we taught all the boys to pee outside. Yes. And that habit <laughs> the has boys been definitely really that. hard to break. The yeah. Sometimes they like, literally just go straight out in the front yard, like <laughs> right in front of all the yeah. neighbors and just uh, drop trow and, and go pee right there. We're like, Oops. hey, bud, maybe you do that in the backyard. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Um, Nicole said, y'all's house is so cute. I'd love a video tour. Y'all should have done some mm -hmm. fixer upper videos when you renovated it. Yeah, we we didn't have our YouTube channel back then. No. Uh, we wish we would have. Like, We took a ton of pictures. We didn't yeah. do a lot of video, though. We wish we would have. Um, yeah, because a video slideshow wouldn't be that fun. I mean, we could do we could still we do a video. Some in the video. Yeah, we could still do like a video you know, tour of the house and then like kind of do some like overlays of pictures of what it looked like. Um, yeah, I wish, I wish we would have done, you know, some like video, like blogging, like vlogging style videos of when we were working on it, that would have been some great content. And also even for us, like part of what, why we love doing this, having this channel is even just documenting it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, being able to look back and, and see, you know, the videos of when our, our dogs were pups and when they had litters and, you know, see our kids with them and stuff. So uh, it would have been cool to document that back when we did it. But, oh, well, we weren't thinking about YouTube back then. No. Hadley said, love your videos. Thank you. Thank you for the encouragement. We're hoping to deliver some more content, some more videos to you guys soon, especially hey, definitely once uh, once we have, you know, puppies. Yeah. So once puppies is just way too easy of content, about, like, you know, 60 days. Yeah. Till they give birth <clears throat> up on average. So once we know they've made it, we'll have a two month countdown till puppies. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, it's just easy for us. Really, honestly, we've talked so much about making a video. I mean, we do really love doing that. Um, we just haven't been able to make it happen. So I'm like, let's just do a live stream because we know like we have time to do yeah. that tomorrow and we can make it happen quickly. And there's no editing or anything like that that has to be done. Cause that's what we're struggling with right now. It's not like finding an hour. It's like all of the things that go into the video. Yeah. It takes some time to edit it. I do the editing and yeah, it's, it's not just the filming it and you got to come up with the idea for the video and then film it. And then, you know, edit it and get it out there so um hopefully i'm hoping that getting uh getting back on the live stream with you guys uh that this will ignite that uh to where we start making the videos again for you guys we uh, teach melissa how to yeah honestly melissa made a lot of our uh social media content while we had the pups so like mm -hmm. a lot of our reels and uh like uh like TikToks and and youtube shorts that you saw while we had the pups melissa was making those so Melissa also writes, uh, she wrote, uh, a lot of the, uh, blog posts that you see on our website. So it's a, it's a family effort. The real Terry said another frequent phrase around here. Do you realize that you are a very large <laughs> nuisance animal? 
uh nicole said any future projects you do you could record them yeah that's true yeah yeah we, we probably record a lot more a lot more now yeah maybe yeah one of the projects i don't know if it'd make good content but i need to our unfortunately our garden our huge you might have seen it on some of our previous videos it's completely uh dry rotted and just falling apart uh that that garden for the most part was already on the property when we bought the house i have no idea how long it was there um and uh the wood just rotted and it's completely falling apart so um i'm gonna have to tear it down and i just haven't had the time just yet um but tear it down and maybe do if i do another gar honestly gardening is not my strong suit i i we the only thing we've ever like produce well is like tomatoes but i don't know i mean with for how much work it takes just buy some dang tomatoes at the grocery store <laughs> i don't know so and the the garden's like right underneath that huge like willow tree on our property so i just want to like clear it out and like that way we can see that tree a lot better mm -hmm. so yeah i don't know if we'll redo the the garden but i mean you did spend a lot of time watering it was kind i did of annoying. it took it took quite a especially over the summer it stuff just dries out here so quick so yeah she said like if y'all redo your garden i know i know i don't think we're going to though i just it's not my thing it's not my thing he likes the if this was like something that we could just do full time which for the record is not yeah he's working three yeah i actually have three um, other jobs right now so that would be different because it is time consuming in this area specifically we don't have a lot of shade or yeah some of the summers are so hot you have to water multiple times and it's just like we have so many other things to do and we have a lot of kids and i don't know maybe if you're right honestly there, like one of your eyebrows is it doesn't like <laughs> for how much work you put into it you're not really saving yeah. that much money <laughs> no. growing it your own nice produce having like fresh stuff but then like we got what were those little some little bugs that were like eating what were those yeah we had aphids really aphids. bad i don't even know what those are but he was like All highly the annoyed about it and oh then my gosh the aphids i went like to wash the lettuce over. and there was like bugs on it and i couldn't eat the lettuce it took over it big time too much so no yes <laughs> <laughs> let's see pjk says viewers from ontario Aww. thanks for watching we love canada yes yes awesome awesome yeah is that weird my daughter is laughing at me was that weird yeah we love we love canada we uh we vacationed twice up in uh montreal me me and michelle love going to montreal we have some uh some favorite uh like restaurants there that we like to hit up some good food there yeah we need to go again but uh we we'd love to also vacation uh like up in like western canada someday it's totally different like montreal is more of um City. like city like european city and you know going for like good food and you know just sightseeing and stuff um western canada is more like uh mountains and awesome hiking and uh we want to do that sometime too like get get a cabin somewhere somewhere like around banff and uh do some awesome some hiking together but it's hard to travel right now so with everything we've got going on marcia asks is mabel inside can we see her she's not i wanted to bring it <laughs> when when we had to rehome her her pup uh recently as she was leaving i'm like i'll just bring mabel in <laughs> she's like you better not <laughs> why are you giving me that look i'm not yeah no she's back outside doing her guard dog duty um we try to keep her inside she just wasn't too she, happy about it yeah yeah she i mean she likes being around us but um she they're i mean our dogs they're they're working dogs and they like to be outside i mean even uh monty we brought him in just for a minute earlier on the live stream um you know he he spends his time <clears throat> on our like house side of the property instead of our animal side uh because him and mac don't don't see eye to eye on things because um they like to fight over the girls mm -hmm. but <clears throat> anyway um even Monty, like he'll come up to the porch and follow us up 
to the door when we're coming home from somewhere and he'll act like he wants to follow us inside but literally if we if we joke around and we're like oh come on in monty he'll literally walk in and get two steps in and look around and be like and then he'll leave mm -hmm. he's like ah, i don't like this place <laughs> i want to be outside so yeah our dogs i mean we definitely have some of our families that have our you know puppies from previous litters they they're inside dogs and they're thriving uh but we didn't raise our personal ones that way so they they love to be outside so as much as i love to cuddle with with mabel on the couch and stuff um she she loves to be outside more so mm -hmm. timothy's watching he said great to see you guys again did you say anything in the first 10 minutes i missed we revealed all of life's yeah i guess you'll have to go back and watch <laughs> no. i'm just kidding yeah, I um, I don't think so. Just kind of, you know, family business. We've been kind of dealing, you know, with some family stuff, um, holidays. Uh, that, yeah, that was about it. Not a whole lot, but we will post this video, so then you could just, in theory, just watch just the first like ten minutes. Yeah, in case yeah. I missed something. But yeah, I can't. I don't even remember exactly what I talked about in the first ten minutes. It wasn't, so. you know, a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I do just want to answer this because I know Timothy messaged us. The family member that we've discussed that had cancer last year, he is actually doing very well. Yes. Um, he is almost in March, he'll be one year post his stem cell transplant, which is a huge success. Yes. Um, so, yeah. There's that. <laughs> yeah we've just our youngest has been ill and just trying to deal with that has been consists so like shifting between family members and and that sort of thing but yeah yeah it's good chris tuning in said where did you get all of your dogs it's a great question so uh they've all come from you know different breeders here around uh like you know south central texas a lot of them came around from around uh like outside of Austin, um, like what, like was it Liberty Hill and or like south of Dallas, kind of yeah, in Co that, Copper's like, Cove, I think was one of them. Yeah, yeah, like south of that, Dallas, um, west of Austin, Cleburne, yeah, Cle Cleburne, yeah. Um, but yeah, we we uh, were specific to find you know good uh, good breeders that were are also um, breeding working working dogs working. Uh, uh, great pyrenees so like millie came from um a farm like a sheep farm they they had like over 100 acres and a gazillion like i couldn't even count how many sheep they had a gazillion yeah That's a gazillion a uh, about a squillion sheep is what they had <laughs> yes um so yeah we, we we wanted to make sure that um you know they came from working lines and um you know because i feel like well we didn't get them to we weren't gonna be breed like we got our dogs to work and then it just yeah, mac and mabel yeah happened from there yep yep yeah we first got mac and mabel just to be working dogs um from you know from different breeders uh but then we fell in love with the breed and we were like you know let's keep them intact mm -hmm. and let, let's give this you know breeder thing a try um uh, but we wanted to you know be responsible with it so we started researching it and yeah that's how we got where we are today mm -hmm. and then yeah. our inside dogs are well monty's a rescue we took monty oh, yeah i guess that's where we, we got all of our dogs yeah, yeah so monty yeah he's he's a rescue um we found he found us i guess uh by um michelle is uh was on a um oh gosh that moth <laughs> Everything's uh, good. <laughs> she's on like a moms of whatever city you know spring branch uh facebook group and some friends of ours know that we love great pyrenees and uh somebody on that moms of whatever you know facebook group posted on there and said that her and her husband were rving they they live in like a they basically you know full-time rvers and they have like a, a motorhome one and they were driving uh through fort worth and uh found this big great pyrenees on the side of the highway on the side of 35 in fort worth in the middle of a storm at night 
and uh, they pulled over, uh, got a hold of him, and he didn't have a collar. He had no identification. Um, he was all matted up, didn't look to be in great health. So they brought him into their RV, and they said they took him to uh, a vet the next day to get him checked out and check him for uh, a microchip. He wasn't chipped. They um, hung like flyers. They hung stuff. flyers. You know, a found dog. They, they did need... their due diligence yeah. trying to return him. Yeah, and nobody, cl- you know, claimed him. Um, <clears throat> they they took him to a groomer, got him, you know, all the mats cut out and everything, got him cleaned up. But they were like, this dog is way too big for mm-hmm. our lifestyle for living in an RV. Uh, so they went on this, you know, Facebook group and we're looking for a good home for him. And one of our friends were knew that we had great Pyrenees, so they you know, tagged Michelle in it. Well, this old lady that, you know, had posted looking for a new home for, for him, people were like flaming her on this Facebook group, like saying, oh, you stole that dog. You need to take him back. Did she just catch that moth? Oh, gross. <laughs> Rosie just caught the moth. You might have been able to see that like right yeah. over there where she did. Anyway, um, people were like flaming this old woman on the Facebook group. Like, Oh, you stole the dog. You should, you, you need to take it back to where you found it and drop it off. He'll find his way home. And it was like, he was literally in the middle of the highway. You're going to go and drop this dog off in the middle of the highway with no, no collar. Like, so Michelle messaged her privately. The lady was like, Hey, you know, here's our address. We would love to take him in. So, and also we, we were planning on at first, like taking him as, in as a foster and then, you know, finding, trying to find a new home for him, but we fell in love with him. Hence and we kept why him. I had to keep reminding him. Yes. So we didn't do that with the other pup. Find another <laughs> family. For, anyway. Yeah. So that's, that's how we got. He, it's we got like ours. one of our videos, isn't it? Of him getting off yeah. the, the motor home. Yeah. yeah. He ran onto our porch and literally, I mean, he sleeps up there. When we woke him up from his nap to bring him inside, he was sleeping on the porch. Yes. He loves it here. He's, I mean, we had to rehab him. He had some health issues that we had to work through. He had been either shot or the, his hind quarters had a injury yeah. for sure. Yeah. He had heartworms, had to do heartworm treatment. I mean, yeah, he's he was, a, definitely... he, was an, he was an expensive rescue. Yeah. We, <laughs> um, but how much was his heartworm uh, treatment? 2100 Yeah. $2,100 for his heartworm treatment, but we were happy to do it. We oh, love yeah. these dogs. He's amazing. Yeah. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, okay. so the two, the inside dogs are Emmy is a rescue, and yeah. Yep. And then our two other. Let's see. Uh, Nicole said, "Mine love to be outside. Makes for so many brushings mm-hmm. because they love yes. my couch." Also. I literally yeah. am. There's actually not a cushion like back here. <laughs> We're. Missing the back cushion on it's our couch right now because she's. I took it off to wash it. I mean, I don't it. know why we even have furniture. The dogs just lay on them all the time. And that's our fault. So <laughs> I feel your pain. It's, yeah, it's terrible. Timothy said, question I bought two female pure pups and they are two years old this month. Mm. They started Ooh. fighting when it's feeding time. We separate them for feeding, but they fight when they get back together. He says they're litter mates. And yes, they're, they're litter mates. So litter we have mates. pretty strict feeding time routine for our dogs. We actually saw that a little bit with Mac and Mabel when they were puppies and we stopped it immediately. And it's, I can, I mean, I guess we could talk about it, but like the gist of it is that we're in charge of feeding time and we make them sit and be in the state of mind of obedience when it's feeding time. Um, yeah, I yeah, can message I mean, you and help you walk yeah. you through that. Um, some the, of it the, is just like yeah, the basics. I mean, it sounds so simple, but and maybe you're already trying this, but like you got, you just have to stick to it. Is um, you don't you you bring their food bowl out to them, and you do not give them their food until they sit and and until they are calm, sitting and calm. If they're not wanting to sit and they're not calm, they don't get they don't get fed. Mm-hmm. They have to learn to do it. And they'll they'll learn because they're gonna get hungry, <laughs> and uh, they they learn pretty quick. And after that, they you know they they realize that they have to be in a calm state and they have to be sitting, and all of that right there. And like she said, that also shows them uh, 
you know, that you are the alpha that like you're, you're in charge here. They're not going to fight over food because you're the one that's in control of the food. So make sure that, that's, uh, that's what, uh, you know, how we prevent food aggression with ours. Yeah. And make sure that you're feeding them the proper <clears throat> amount. Yeah, um, that, that's true. They can kind of get. Yeah. If you're, yeah. Check, always, always check what the bag, like what the, the dog food itself says yeah. for their weight um, and make sure that you're feeding the right amount. Cause if, you may, you may not even realize that you might be underfeeding them mm -hmm. and that's if why they're, they're hungry, fighting. They'll, that's yeah. If they're, if they're super hungry, they might be trying to fight the other one for more food. So yeah, you, you might be surprised how much food they eat. Like Mac, he literally eats like for his weight, eight cups of food per day, yeah. eight, eight per day. Yeah. So four cups in the morning, them, four at night. Need to weigh them and make sure that you're actually feeding them the correct amount. Yeah. Cause honestly, like if I had to guess, I would not have guessed that he would, eat eight cups a day mm -hmm. that seems ridiculous but that's how much he eats <laughs> that's how much he eats and he do, he's not putting on any weight so it's crazy yeah, he's just so he's active eating. yeah he's so active and he's so young our vet says that when he calms down a little bit he's probably gonna widen like mabel you know the what you were saying about mabel earlier yeah yeah <laughs> <clears throat> Chris said, check, uh, check out Bighorn Mountain Alpaca's YouTube channel. She has videos of her experience raising litter mate peers. Yeah, that's good. Um, I don't know where she went, but Nicole has litter mates that she's raising. Um, yeah. We just never we, had um, that issue. I mean, we yeah. just have strict eating. On one of our like, previous live streams, we've... Um, we brought on one of the families that got pups from us and they have litter mates from, excuse me, um, like a couple of years ago, uh -huh. uh, from a litter a couple of years ago and sh they have litter mates and we, you know, did a whole live stream interviewing them to, you know, is it true about litter mate syndrome? And I'm sure some of them can, but I think some of it comes down to training, like a lot of it, honestly. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, as we've gotten, I mean, even the puppy that we just had, we weren't sure what her eating situation was going to be because she was the only dog in that household. And then she came here, but she took to it really quickly. Um, so they don't really receive correction very well. But, you know, with any dog, they learn yeah. what they're supposed to do in order to get what they want. <laughs> this is good. PJK said the dominant one gets the bull second after mm -hmm. focus. We will literally make them, you know, we'll use like verbal correction, like tsh, tsh, yeah. um, on them. I'll stand there for 10 minutes. I don't care. We're not going to feed until you're it's in similar relaxed, to, uh, like, yeah, state of mind. Similar to Melissa's advice on leash training. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if the dog's pulling, just stop walking. Stop like they're going to realize that when I do this, we don't go anywhere. Yeah. So when it's feeding time, if you're anxious and you're, you know, uh, being food aggressive, well, you don't get food then you're going to learn really quick because you're, you're going to want to eat. We have friends that have a great Pyrenees that they don't let their kids right feed him because he's food aggressive, but they will yeah. tell you that they allowed that to happen and right. they didn't stop it. And it's so out of control that they don't even let their kids feed the animals in our house. Our kids do the feeding time. Feeding time is because I'm usually making dinner. So a lot of times I'm barely getting home from work. So our kids, our kids do the morning and evening feeding time. And we ne we've never had any fear and anxiety that like the dogs would be aggressive with the kids well, we've taught our kids and the kids the same, can the kids know. can handle it like the dogs realize that we are in charge even mm -hmm. even the kids like we can send our 10 and or like 10 and 12 year old down there to probably do like feeding that. time yeah yeah we could probably send our eight-year-old jackson down there and the dogs would you know obey him the only food aggression we allow, and we talked <clears throat> yes, about Yes, yeah, we actually need to do a video on that. When our dogs correct our chickens, the chickens, or sometimes the, the goats, goats yeah. of their own food, <clears throat> we allow them to set that boundary because they aren't aggressive. They're setting a boundary. It can yes. look, but because they'll occasionally chase, and that's the time we do allow chasing. Yes. Um, but I, I don't know. It, it sounds, tonight, it sounds and I was counter. Like, we need to, it yeah. sounds counteractive or counterintuitive, yeah. but. Cause you don't want to encourage your great Pyrenees to like chase your chickens, but 
or your goats or whatever. But to me, we as the humans are the alphas. But then if there was like a food chain, the dogs are the next and then the livestock under that. So like that's how it should fall. And so you know, when we're feeding, they're over there in the in the area with the goats and the and the chickens. And may, maybe you have a, a farm or a ranch where you can pen up your goats and your chickens while you feed your dogs or something. But you know. honestly, that would be a pain in the butt to do every single feeding time. Um, so instead, we just train our livestock and our dogs or basically let our dogs set the boundaries where when we feed them and their food trough is on the ground and they're eating, if a chicken or a goat comes up to try to eat out of their food, we're fine with the dog growling and barking and even like kind of chasing off that that animal that either a chicken or a goat because it's like no this is my food like you're not eating my food now they don't do that to each other because it we've trained the dogs not to you don't even try to eat out of each other's food bowl like it's that's your unless food they bowl. walk away and then they want to yeah there are some times where they've just had enough to eat and they get up and they walk away and at that point you've basically surrendered the food and um if another one another dog wants to finish it off go for it so that's kind of how we handle it <clears throat> yep let's see <clears throat> uh we bought a male and mm. Timothy said we bought a male and he's been separate from the females. We hope to breed them this year. Any advice for timing? Mm. I don't remember what state you're in, but I think Alabama or something. I think so. Um, we try to use weather timing because we've just had terrible. <clears throat> um, we don't like having puppies in January. We had a January litter and it was very difficult. Um, I guess a couple things, make sure they're a year old, you know, 18 months, you're not breeding a puppy. That would be number one. Number two, I think you said you had two females. I wouldn't advise breeding them at the same time. It was a lot, um, especially yeah. if it's your first litter, I would just kind of do one at a time. So I'm going to tell you when they're in heat and they may go into heat at the same time because they are together that male is going to do anything and everything he can to get to them. Yes. Um, other Even than that, jumping cross fences and just yeah. know that after <clears throat> you have confirmed mating, you're looking at about 60 days to delivery. It's like 58 to 64 or so. So about two months after, and then for another two, you know, to three months caring for puppies. So you're really taking up, quite a bit of your time. So I guess what that looks like for your family, I can't answer that, but that's about the time commitment it is about 12 weeks after birth. And then you won't want to have travel plans, you know, kind of leading up to that 60 days. Yeah, it is a time commitment for sure. Mm -hmm. Forrest said on the occasions that sheep get into the feeding area, the pups will bark and drive off the adults, but will share with mm -hmm. the lambs, literally lamb and pup heads in the same bowl mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah, oh, That's awesome. <laughs> I would just allow that to keep, let them set that boundary. Yeah. We don't get involved in it. Um, they, I've never seen them get out of hand. And no. if they want to let, I think it's <clears> disgusting. <throat> the chickens eat chicken food. I think that's disgusting. But other than that. Yeah. It is what it is. Animals will do that. The real Terry said, funny things I've learned since getting a giant animal. Southwest Airlines requires that companion animal yes. must be able to fit under the seat in front of your mm -hmm. seat in a carrier. That's, that's true. Cool. Yeah. So we, um, like for people buying puppies from us, uh, we won't ship them like as cargo, um, like alone on a plane, like just by itself underneath. Um, so we tell people if, if you live out of state, if you want to drive or, you know, wherever, if you want to drive and pick up the puppy, awesome. We also, we would prefer that if somebody like comes in person and, um, you know, gets to see the farm and meet the parent dogs and all that. Um, but if you're flying, we, we, uh, tell people we'll meet them at the airport if they don't want to like rent a car and come visit the farm. Uh, but they have to come at least here to like San Antonio airport or Austin or you know, whatever. And we'll meet you at the airport, but the dog has to be able to fit yeah. in a, the puppy has to fit in the carrier under the seat. And at 
We can't do that at 12 weeks. Yeah, at 12, uh, you can't, at 12 weeks, they're already too big. So we keep our livestock guardian pups, like pups that are going to be livestock guardians until 12 weeks, but they're too big to fit under a seat on a plane at that age. At eight weeks, they're barely mm -hmm. the size. So yeah, that's definitely something you learn. <laughs> He said, also, many 55 plus communities have a dog weight limit of 25 to 35 pounds. Well, that makes sense. The bigger dogs, dogs are a little hard to handle sometimes. Mm -hmm. But they can be sweet. <clears throat> Nicole said, got to go put the kids in bed. It was nice to see y'all. Have a great night. I'll send some pictures of the pups in a bit. I'll post them on Facebook and Insta. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in, Nicole. Yeah, this, this live stream has gone quite a bit longer than our previous ones. We'll finish up these questions real quick, the last few ones, and then uh, we'll call it a night here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Timothy said, your cab mount replacement video was great. You helped me understand what I need to do with my truck to stop that irritating squeaking. One of our most popular video. <laughs> yes. It's yeah. a random video. I'll be honest, Tim Timothy, like I've been hesitant to like make more content that's not like Great Pyrenees because like I feel like that's Kind of what our brand has become and i didn't want to like go too off brand and then like lose subscribers or whatever but i don't know maybe i need to you know start doing some videos like that too uh, we'll see i i mean there's definitely there's always stuff i'm fixing um especially everywhere. yeah everywhere that's what i do on several of my jobs that i work um <clears throat> chris said how often do you groom the great pyrenees so we trim nails for sure at least once a month and we check them kind of in between um brushing a lot uh <laughs> we never like cut their hair no as far as grooming no yeah um bathe like once a month sometimes less like in the winter we'll go december to i mean it just depends on the weather yeah so much of it is the weather too because that affects their shedding all that stuff but I would say once a month is about average, but maybe every two months during certain, you know, times. Their coat kind of cleans itself. Yep. They don't generally really enjoy it. Um, it's just more of we do it, you to know, to check their, their skin and maintain yeah. the coat. And then, of course, their nails, we trim those because they can get out of hand and then get caught on something and rip. And yeah. A so. couple of tools that come in super handy. Honestly, there's a bunch of tools like uh good clippers for their nails and stuff like that but the two things that are like honestly necessities for grooming a great pyrenees uh you can find them on our website if you go on uh, willowridgeacres.com up in the navigation you know menu click on shop you'll see our like our amazon page um and these products are listed on there but uh it's like a water pick pet wand is what it's called and you can hook it up there's adapters either for your shower where you can like clean them in the shower but it's great get, for kids too I'm not they get lie. too big to be in the shower um but <laughs> there's also all the puppies when we yes the puppies. yeah but it it's just like one that puts out like just a ton of like tiny streams, yeah. like strong streams and it helps to like get into their coat really good and like clean all the way down to their skin um but yeah it's made by water pick it's called a pet wand and there's like an adapter for your hose too so a lot of times they bathe them out like on our driveway um and then there's that and then uh what was called a coat blower and that's that's amazing. that's amazing honestly it's it's a little pricey but the one we got i think it was like 170 dollars mm -hmm. or something worth every single penny mm -hmm. we were skeptical at first and we waited for a while to buy one uh it was kind of always like on a wish list but we we're like ah oh, it's kind of pricey we don't need it finally we like splurged on it and we we're like we wish we would have bought this when we first got our mac and mabel like show dogs when you blow their coat yeah it makes a huge difference and because like when you bathe it bathe them yourself then you're like using a hair dryer and honestly like or we, just towel dry or just towel them and then they're, and they're never like, dry <clears throat> but yeah if you try to use a hair dryer on your great pyrenees for one you're probably going to burn it out because like you're literally going to be blow drying it with your hair dryer for like 45 minutes on high mm -hmm. and it's still not even going to be that dry um so save your hair dryer and instead like i'm telling you it's worth it i don't know if every coat blower is that good um i know that there are some cheaper ones i don't know it might be a you get what you pay for thing the one that we have we have in our that shop link um i think we even might have it in like uh video descriptions there's a link to it but it's the one that we bought off of amazon and it's amazing 
uh, it's just so much more powerful than a, uh, a, a hair dryer. And literally what would take 45 minutes to dry, how long does it take with a coat dryer or a coat puller? I mean, for the puppies, we can fully blow dry a puppy in less than 10 minutes. Yeah, we can we can blow dry completely, like super dry a puppy in like 10 minutes with it. The adults, like 15, 20. Yeah, 15 20, or 20 minutes yeah. with for an adult. But like some of it depends on their <clears> behavior, <throat> too. And you have to kind of get them used to it because it is kind of loud. Yeah, they are. But... It's louder and it's a little it's more powerful. So sometimes uh, yeah, you do have to get them used to it because like, they can just be. But none of ours like are anxious. like fucking Broncos or anything. Yeah. It's not that loud. Or a lot of times they just don't like it around their face, right? Maybe we'll just need to make a video and like yeah, show that is how to that is one of the it. videos we want to do sometime soon is like a product review on that coat blower. Just because, I, like, I'll just be a hundred percent honest. I was super skeptical about them. I thought they were overpriced. They probably didn't work any better than a hair dryer. We finally got one and with the twenty five. Wish we would have done it a long time had, ago. We ordered it and yes. It was amazing. I'm not going to lie. Like we kind of, we're the dread. best purchase. We have like a love hate relationship with like pickup day because we're, you know, it's emotional and we've become attached to all of, you know, our <clears throat> animals. But the other side of it was like the time and figuring out how we were going to bathe. Like if we had four pickups that day, how are we going to bathe four puppies like that quickly? Yeah. It was terrible. And this made it to where like it was it's doable. Yeah. Yeah, we bathed five puppies in one hour one time. And we wouldn't have been able to do that without no. the coat blower. So very, very worth it, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, last two things. The real Terry say question. I will not make Chinese food before our next live. Sorry, I ate Chinese so food tonight sorry. and I'm He's like I keep like, like burping. Times. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh he said, Question, do your peers roam off of your property? Definitely not. No. Uh not on purpose um so if you watch our video on uh like our fencing you'll you know hear the story but basically uh one year uh fireworks scared the crap out of mac and mabel and uh, we we've got like security cameras outside on our property and i came home from work that night and it was the most eerie feeling ever um i went outside to greet them and usually they hear me and they're like super excited to see me and they come up wagging their tails I went outside it was like dead quiet um I knew something was wrong right away like that's so abnormal to not see them first thing when I come home um so I called to them they didn't come uh, I knew something was wrong and uh I start looking for them I can't find them I'm in freak out mode I review our security camera footage and I see that fireworks were popping off and uh Mac jumped to the fence uh, and then about 10 minutes later, cause Mabel was anxious because Mac all of a sudden disappeared. Like she saw him jump the fence and leave and she's not as big and tall as him. So she's trying to find how she can follow him. And she somehow made her way over the fence too. And, uh, we live on a property that's like off of like a state highway, um, not right off of it, but there's like a, basically, I don't know, like a few acres of uh property between like wooded property between us and that highway and they both made it down through that property onto the highway and we found mabel that night literally uh like late at night it was hours of searching for them and we found her like down in the like kind of the ravine right next to the highway like scared um luckily she didn't it's like 65 miles an hour on that highway right there luckily she didn't get hit we couldn't find mac um we were up until like four o'clock in the morning i burnt through batteries on two flashlights two rechargeable flashlights looking and couldn't find them and you know we got to the point where it was like we just have to go to sleep and wake up first thing in the morning and look for them again it's too dark and i don't have a flashlight uh so that was a hard night to try to fall asleep um but then first thing in the morning we get up and we start looking again turns out he was in a house like literally right off of the like he wasn't but 50 yards away from where we found mabel uh he wandered onto another person's property and was sleeping on this old lady's porch but where we live everybody's got like fenced in and gated properties so like especially at four o'clock in the morning i couldn't be jumping people's fences or going through people's gates with a flashlight looking for my dog 
uh, that's a good way to get shot here in Texas. So <laughs> uh, I couldn't do that. I was trying my best to like look for him with a flashlight, but even just like flashing my flashlight on other people's property that late at night is not a good idea. So it was hard to find him, uh, but we found him the next morning. But ever since then, we, uh, we've done a lot of things to keep them on our property. They've, they, uh, the, the biggest thing was, um, uh, we put up a hot wire, like mm -hmm. an electric fence hot wire. Which I didn't want to do, but. Yeah, she didn't want to do it because we have kids and stuff. Um, but honestly, we don't even have it on most of the time. Uh, it only took them getting the, them, not the kids, the the dogs. <laughs> it only took, <laughs> it only took the dogs getting shocked a couple of times. And they have a respect for the boundaries of the fence. Like they, um, they only come like a couple of feet from the fence and they won't. They won't even test the fence anymore. I'm, so. I'm scared. I've never been shocked by it, but I'm afraid of it. I no, I touched one when I was a kid. My best friend had horses. So yeah, we don't she's watching we don't allow our bed. peers no. to roam off the property. That definitely is common. Um Great Pyrenees like to roam if you allow them to. I mean, I wouldn't call that roaming. That was like a Yeah, it was an escape. escape. Like they were they were scared of the fireworks. So all right. Timothy said, your family has been going through a great many challenges. Uh, keep leaning on the Lord. My prayers are with you. Thank you, Timothy. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there's it's a lot. Uh, we honestly haven't shared a lot of it yet, but maybe someday we will. Um, but we appreciate your guys' prayers and, and your support. And Chris said, God bless Texas. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that. Uh, we are out for today. Thank you guys for sticking on. This is the longest live stream we've done. We're going to be out of town next Thursday, so we won't be able to. Uh, yeah, I will. Yeah. Maybe it'll just be a random day. I don't know. Last night we decided, was that last night? To do this tonight. Yeah. So we'll just fly by the seat of our pants. Is well, we were right trying first? to do it on Tuesdays. That's what our thing says on our YouTube <laughs> banner. Maybe we'll get back on that schedule again. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. We'll see you again soon.